Thank you for having a look at this introduction to Author version 8.2. I'm Frode Alexander Hegland, developer of the software. When we open Author, we get an open dialog window. We can open files so we can click New Document at the bottom. Today we're going to look at the user guide, however. First I have to unlock this user guide, so I click Lower Right. Then I hide the old locked user guide so we can go through the unlocked one interactively. First, I'd like to highlight that though there are a lot of keyboard shortcuts in Author, you can control click on any text and you will get a list of commands and the commands will be listed with the keyboard shortcuts to help you get familiar with them over time. Also, you can hit the escape key, top left of your keyboard, to go in and out of full screen. Normally, the escape key just escapes from the current view, but in Author you can also use it to go into full screen which is a convenient way of getting in and out of focused writing mode without hunting for the little window dot. You can fold your documents by doing Command minus to get an instant outline. You can do Command minus again to see less and less levels until you're left with only level one headings. This is possible because in author it's easy to assign text to be a heading. Let me show you by control clicking on this text. First, I need to make it ordinary text since it's already a heading and then I'll assign it heading level one. This is what allows us to fold the document. To enter focus mode, click in the bottom right of the screen or keyboard shortcut command slash. This makes all the text outside of your current paragraph where your cursor is slightly grayed out. It's worth repeating that doing the escape key to go in and out of full screen is also a kind of focus mode. The find command in author is based on selecting text and doing Command F. This then instantly hides every paragraph which does not have that text. The text that you selected shows up bold, all other text normal. You can scroll up and down to see where the text appears, and you can do Command F again to go back to where you were. Or you can click on a paragraph to jump to it. One of the things I use this for myself is to check if I've already used certain text in a document, or to see where other things appear so I can make sure I have the right document flow. Defining concepts to help you think is one of the core features of Author. To do this, select whatever text you would like to define and do Command D. You then get the Define Concept dialog, where you can write, in just plain language, what you feel the definition of the concept is. If you write something that's already a defined concept, it turns bold and you can click on it to look at that definition instantly. This means that you have a basic knowledge graph built into Author. You can then choose to look at the map view of the defined concepts through the Command M shortcut or by clicking at the bottom of the screen. Here are the concepts I've defined in this document so far, including the concept we just added. I can freehand organize the concepts as I see fit to get a better idea how they may cluster and relate. You'll see that some of the lines connecting are dark and some are light. The ones that are dark means that the connecting text is included in the definition that you have selected. If you point to it, as you can see here, it shows what that sentence is, which contained this other defined concept. This way you can see what the relationship is and decide whether you think it's still accurate or whether you want to edit it. The light gray lines are kind of a cheat to show that another concept is pointing to the one that you have selected, helping you get a better instant overview of how you select the concept relates to what else is on the screen. Also in the map view, you can do Command D again to edit the definition of any concept, and here you can click on a different concept that are bold to jump to them, just like you can in the right view. If you double click on text in the map view, it performs a find operation. You can click exit at the bottom of the screen or on the margin to return to the map view. To edit text, you select it and hit enter. I'm going to delete the definition of concept, which we just made, because we have defined concepts, so we really don't need it. When I do that by doing Command D and clicking delete, the text remains on screen but it's now italic, meaning it's plain text rather than a concept. So this is your general thinking space where you can decide where to put your concepts, see how they relate, and see if your definitions hang together as you connect this conceptual space. Please note that these concepts will be exported if you export to PDF as a glossary, as I will show you later. When you're full screen, you have magic margins. That means you can double click in the margin and write notes. These are like sticky notes, which will stay on the side of your screen. When your cursor goes away from the margin, they disappear. 
When your cursor goes back the margin and you click, they will come back. This can be useful to remind you of something you may want to add to your document later. Highlighting an author is quite important because it allows you to deal better with large documents. To highlight text, select the text and Command Shift H. It will now be highlighted on a white background, not a strong yellow background. When you fold into an outline, any highlighted text will appear. If there's more than one highlighted section within a heading level, there will be a hyphen between them. These highlights are not included on export. They are purely to help you get a better flow of your document when writing and editing. The way that I use it, for example, is when I wrote my thesis, I highlighted in the paragraphs the really salient bits that I had to know to make sure I had the right flow of the document without being burdened by what the reader would need for context, but for me at this point was not pertinent. Heading notes do not appear in normal right view, but if you command click on a heading, you get a heading notes dialog. This is very useful if you have revisions to do later. For instance, if you're a student and you're talking to an advisor or teacher, that advisor or teacher may give you suggestions as to what to do with that section. So you can command click on the heading, write the notes, you don't see anything in the normal writing view, it doesn't distract. However, when you fold the document into an outline, it gives you an asterisk next to that heading. So you know there's something special about that heading, which is clear without being obtrusive. There are different views built into authors, such as Command Shift D to see all the headings plus any defined concepts, Command Shift N to see any headings plus any named entities in the documents, and Command Shift B to gray out anything that is not a heading or bold. In all these views, headings are shown because they give you context as to where the text is. Citing an author is based around Command T for citation. In this example, I want to cite the extended mind, but I also want the name of the book to appear. So I just write the extended mind, copy that text, Command T, and hit Enter. Author then searches Google Books to find the book citation information. I hit Enter again, and I get all the information as you can see here. When I'm working in author, this shows up as author date because then I can easily see the right information about the citation. When I export my document, I can choose to have it in a different format, such as superscript number. When citing an academic paper, it's useful to have the paper's DOI. You can just copy the DOI, paste it into author, and author will resolve it into a full citation automatically. You can easily copy citations and paste them in a different location in the document or to other documents. This means that you can use author as a basic citation management system. Should you wish to cite from a web page, copy the text you want to cite. Go to author to command T and you'll see there's an option for using Safari copy. Author tries to get information about that page for you. The thing it cannot get is the author's name since it does not encode in the web page's metadata, it just shows up as plain text on the page which the system cannot know what it is. That's something you have to go and copy yourself. But at least it saves you a few steps. To add citation to an image, simply click on it. One of the really nice things about being in the Apple ecosystem is that you can even take a picture from your iPhone, copy it, then in your Mac you can choose to paste it and it will paste right into author. I then click on the image of my son and I can check a little bit when asked for the author and I click authors which fills in my full name and I just give the picture a title. It knows my name from the expert dialogue and it's also in preferences. So once you have written your name once, it can be used again and again with a simple click. To add a link in author, just copy the link, select the text you want the link to appear on, and do Command K, and it's instantly there. You don't even have to look at the dialog. You can also, of course, paste the link. Once you hit spacebar, it's live. Please note, when you export your document to PDF, unfortunately, link text do not always remain live. So it's a good idea to have the link written out, I'm afraid. To link to selection in your own document, select the text that you want to have as a link, then do Command Shift K. Find the heading you want to link to and assign it. Now, when you click on this link, you get an option to jump to that heading. This will be exported to PDF, giving your readers a great way to move around your documents. A new feature we have in Author 8.2 is the journal, and the journal is simply an author document with all the functionality you would expect in an author document, but you launch it by doing Command J for journal. This means that if you're in a meeting or just have thoughts to jot down, just do Command J and you have your journal. The reason for the journal is simply so that you always have instant access to one consistent document. We can write, highlight, assign headings, add citations, and define concepts, so the information is always instantly accessible to you in the future.
When you're done, just close it. Everything is saved, everything is taken care of. To add an endnote, put the cursor where you want the endnote to be and do Command E. It will appear as a dagger in the author document, but it will turn into a sequentially listed superscript letter on export. One of the stresses of working in a digital environment is that if you cut something and forget to use it, it's gone. So in author, everything you cut is remembered except for when you cut and paste it, and of course everything you copy, because then you still have the original. So you can cut, cut, cut. Then you do option V for cutting paste, and you get everything you have cut in that document. This stays persistent even if you save the document and quit author. When you come back, it's still there. Speech to text is an amazing OS feature that's just amazing. Just do the globe key and D and speak the text where you want to have it transcribed. When you export your document with Command Shift E, you have many options as to how it should appear. We're going to look at the basics. We're putting this exported PDF in the desktop, and I have Reader installed so it'll automatically open in Reader. In this example, where we exported our user guide, it has a clickable table of contents. As you can see, it's nicely interactive. If you click on any of the citations, you get all the citation information, and you can click on a link to access the source. If you select text in Reader and do Command F for Find, the selected text will appear with two gray lines of text above and below it, so you can see a bit of context. Since this text was defined as a concept in Author, and it has been exported to PDF as a glossary term, the definition appears at the top of the screen. Just like in Author, if there's any text that is bold, you can click on it to read that definition. You can also click on any of the found sections below, or you can do Command F again to exit this view. Here you can see the simple glossary at the back of the document and the formatted endnotes and references, all automatically done by author. Let's return to author. In author, you can set your preferences by going to the author menu and then choosing preferences or by doing command comma. One of the useful things you can do here is decide you may want a narrow column to focus, or you may want an absolutely massive column for editing. It's entirely up to you. Just click on the slider. You can also toggle between a gray neutral theme or a warm background theme. If your system settings go into dark mode, then author will go into dark mode as well. As you can see, it follows either warm or gray tones. I prefer the light mode for most of my work, so I will leave it in light mode. There are two free companion pieces of software you can have if you like. One is Reader that you've seen briefly. Let's go back there for a second. I want to show you one more thing. If you select text in Reader and just do a normal Command C to copy, then you come back to author and paste it, it will paste as a full citation. The reason for that is when you exported it, you have the augmenting document with visual meta option on. This means that in the document, there's all kinds of small text at the end as an appendix. This is visual meta, it contains all the metadata for your document, it is an emerging standard we're supporting. It means that your document becomes much more richly interactive when reading as a PDF, both for a human and for a system. And it's robust. You can even print out your document, have it scanned later, and you will have lost none of this interactive metadata. Finally, there's Liquid. Liquid allows you to look up things really quickly. Select the text you want to interact with and control click on the text and choose Liquid or use an assigned keyboard shortcut. By default, it's command at sign, but it's easy to change. I made a command shift space, but that removes Apple Spotlight, so we cannot use it as default. Anyway, once you've done that, the text you selected jumps into this dialog, the liquid dialog. Let's say we want to look up the word in Wikipedia. We could use the mouse like you see here. But also notice there is an R and a W for references and Wikipedia that indicates the keyboard shortcut to make this a very fast operation. Just for fun, I'm going to select text and look up an image. I'm not going to do that using the mouse. I'll be using keyboard shortcut only. What I did with the keyboard shortcut was S for search and I for images. There is much more that Liquid can do. I'll show you just one. For instance, you can use it to translate. For example, from English to Japanese. If I now Command C for copy, it copies the translated text and closes the Liquid dialog paste, and here's the Japanese text. Thanks again for having a look at Author. It's much appreciated. 
I would also like to suggest that if you're at all interested in the future of interactive text, please feel free to join us with our series of books and symposium and meetings where we discuss how text can be improved to help us think and communicate. Just search for the future of text. If you have any further questions, please feel free to visit our website, augmentedtext.info, or to send us an email at hello at augmentedtext.info.